Hey, what's up? I'm Will Button from DevOps for Developers. And in this video, we're talking about what does it mean when you see a job application that says Linux skills are required. So Linux is everywhere, even in Microsoft specific shops, they still have Linux. You just can't get away from it, which, you know, is not good, not bad. That's just how it is. And so almost every job description you see they'll talk about having Linux skills. So what are they really looking for there? Like as a high level overview, just looking for a familiarity with Linux. Like do you know how to log into a Linux system? Do you know how to execute different Linux commands? Are you familiar with how Linux operates and how it differs from something like Microsoft Windows? At some point in your DevOps career, you will be required to build a Linux server and install packages or install software on it, configure those services, and get them up and running. So let's talk about the specific skills that are going to be helpful to you. First of all is accessing the Linux server, because most of the time in today's environment you won't have physical access to it through the keyboard. So you access it via SSH. So first skill is you've got to understand how to SSH into something. Initially, you might SSH using a username and password to access that, but you're gonna to wanna to make that go one step further and learn how to access servers using your SSH key, which means that you need to understand what the private and public keys are and how to get those on a server and use that to access that server remotely. Some of the common tasks that you'll have to do on a Linux server are checking to see how much disk space is free, seeing how much memory is utilized, um, what's the CPU utilization like, and then you'll also need to know how to start and stop services, possibly create services on your own, and you also need to understand how to install and remove software, which is going to differ based on the Linux distribution that you're using. So if you're using a Red Hat based distribution, you use the Yum package manager. If you're using one of the Debian based distributions, it's done with apt-get and so on. If you don't have experience with any Linux distribution, I would recommend starting with either one of the Red Hat distributions like CentOS or the Debian based distributions like either Debian itself or Ubuntu. Although I kind of really hesitate to use Ubuntu. Now I know it's super popular, like everyone uses Ubuntu. I personally don't like it though, and here's why. Ubuntu is the Microsoft Windows of Linux. Whenever you get a Microsoft Windows workstation or server, it's got everything installed on it, right? Do you need um, DHCP? Doesn't matter, it's installed. Do you need IIS? Doesn't matter, it's installed. Do you need whatever this obscure service is? Doesn't matter, it's installed. Same thing with Ubuntu. The reason Ubuntu is so easy to learn and get started with is because everything's already installed. That comes back to haunt you though, because everything that's installed is a security liability you have to drag around with you. So those 14 services that you don't use are still installed on that server and still represent a security risk for you in securing your environment. Either way though, um, you need Linux skills and if Ubuntu is the way that you get them, that's fine because those skills will transfer to any other distribution. Now one of the key places that Linux differs from Windows is in administrative access, right? Because on Linux there's this user called root that's just the root. They can do everything. And so whenever I interview you about Linux systems, I'm gonna probe with some questions to figure out if you understand the importance of root and how to do your job without logging in as root. You know, we're gonna talk about using sudo to do different things when you need elevated permissions and talk about ownership of files and directories on the system and make sure that you understand how file ownership works in Linux, how to assign and change file permissions. I'm also gonna ask some questions to make sure that you understand how the directory structure on a Linux server is laid out because it's very specific and very organized and certain things belong in certain places. And so we're just gonna talk about that. You know, you don't have to know every single folder out there, 
but I'm gonna ask you some of the common ones of, you know, like looking for configuration files in slash Etsy and looking for logs in slash var logs, different things like that. So if you don't have any Linux skills, what steps can you take to get those? Well, Linux is free, so you can download and install it and run it and just do all these things on your own. There's a couple of ways you can accomplish that. I mean, like if you want to go full hardcore, you want to figure Linux out, format your hard drive and install Linux on it and just use that as your primary operating system. That'll get you there. If though, you have other things on there that you can't really do that, or if you have you know, certain things that only work in Microsoft Windows or whatever your operating system is, I get that. It's probably not a wise choice to make, but you can download something like VirtualBox and run a Linux system inside your existing operating system, or you can resize your disk and do a dual boot. Um, some of the other things you can do is launch an AWS account, which we've talked about in some of the other videos assuming that you put on billing alerts so that you don't get caught with an unexpected bill from this learning experience and launch an EC2 instance out there and then the benefit of that is then you force that SSH access because SSH access is important so you'll force those skills because the server doesn't exist it's out in AWS the only way you can get to it is via SSH. Once you've got that server running in whatever capacity you've chosen to do that, learn how to install and configure packages on it. Some great examples of doing that are install Nginx or Apache as a web server and launch a website on it. Install a database, whether that's Postgres or MySQL, and run it as a database server. Um, maybe do something you know, like install memcached or something like that, just basically to understand how you download, install, and configure different software applications, and then understand like what it takes to get that opened up. Learn how to use the IP tables so that you can open up only the ports that are required for that specific service. For example, if you install Nginx and MySQL, and your Nginx web application talks to the MySQL service, but you don't want MySQL exposed, show me that you can configure IP tables so that port 80 or 443 is exposed for your web service, but port 3306 is blocked and only available from within that Linux server. If you want to go deeper into that, Google has an IT sysadmin course, and there's also the Linux Professional Certification Institute, both of those, I think, cost money. The Google one is a little bit cheaper, I think. But, you know, it's they're both very well laid out courses that give you the basics, uh, the fundamentals of Linux system administration. And even if you do have to spend a little money for it, those are skills that are going to help you time and time and time again every single day of your DevOps career. So it's just a good investment. All right, so if you have questions or comments, leave those down in the comments down below. If I forgot to mention anything, which is highly likely, go ahead and put those down there too. Otherwise, I'll see y'all in the next video.